So the Canon M50 has proved itself over many years as one of the best budget vlogging cameras. So today I built a relatively compact and cheap vlogging setup with the Canon M50 for under 600 bucks. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Aero Vlogs. Today we're taking a look at a pretty budget compact uh, vlogging setup for the Canon M50. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so the first item on this list is obviously the Canon M50. This camera, like I said, is an amazing camera and it has held its own ever since it was released. It's, you know, it's been an amazing camera for people who are looking to get into video and photo and specifically vlogging because it's got a mic jack, it has a flip out screen, it has amazing autofocus, it has all the things that vloggers, I guess you could say, really look for when it comes to a good camera. So needs no introduction, but Canon M50, that is the camera. All right, so the lens I picked out for vlogging is the 15 to 45 kit lens. Now, before you go just like, I don't know, whatever you're gonna do, just give it a chance. It is a very, very versatile lens and it comes with the camera. That kind of you know qualifies for something because this lens gives you all the way from 15, which is great for vlogging, all the way to 45, which gives you a nice little compressed background and can actually look pretty cool. So the Canon M50 with the kit lens looks pretty good. It's a solid option for vlogging because it's pretty wide and it's just overall a versatile lens. Now, if I was to recommend something that you could use more like in low light or something, there's a Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4, uh, but that is like a $400 lens. And I said, I want to keep this under like 600 bucks. So that wouldn't obviously fit in the budget of the setup and any other lens really wouldn't fit in very well. Uh, there is the Canon EFM 11 to 22, but again, that's just like $400. So that's why I went with the kit lens and it's a versatile lens. It has good autofocus. It's pretty small, it's pretty light. It just doesn't do that great in low light, but honestly, it's good enough. All right, so the tripod holding up this entire setup is a $20 tripod from Manfrotto. It's called the Manfrotto Pixie. And this tripod is a very surprisingly robust tripod for the price. I think you can get it for about 17 to 20 bucks on Amazon. It comes in white, black, and like gray or red or something. And it's amazing. It's got a little ball head that allows you to adjust the angle of your camera and it's super easy. It's just got a little button that you press and it allows you to easily adjust the angle, release it, and it sticks in place. And it can actually hold much heavier than just this Canon M50, but I thought it would work well with this setup because it is a pretty small little tripod, but yeah, that's what's keeping this whole setup up. All right, so the microphone of choice is what you're hearing right now. And that is the Tackstar SGC 598 shotgun microphone. So this choice is kind of interesting because normally people would say the Rode Video Micro, uh, and I would, I don't have one, but it is a pretty good microphone as well. And it's pretty small, uh, but it is $60. This one you can get for like 25 bucks on Amazon. And I feel like when people are trying to get into filmmaking and vlogging and that kind of stuff. Camera gear is already really expensive. So to get things cheaper, like a cheap tripod, a cheap, cheaper camera relatively, and a cheaper microphone, this is what it sounds like right now. This is a test of the onboard microphone with the Canon M50. And uh, yeah, this is how it sounds. Test, 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 one, two, three. This is a test of the Techstar SGC598 microphone. This is how it sounds. Test, 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 one, two, three. This is with the plus 10 dB level switched up. Yeah, it has a plus 10 dB switch, which allows you to use more of the amps in the microphone because Canon usually is known for not that great of internal amps. Uh, so yeah, you turn that on and then you turn down the actual levels in your camera and you can actually get some decent sounding audio. Now, if you do want to step it up, like I said, I'd say two options that I've heard and listened to is the Rode Video Micro for $60 and the D80 D3. This is a $100 microphone, but it is a very massive step in the sound quality. It sounds much better in the low ends and just everything about it sounds better. But again, the, that's 
$80 more than this little Techstar microphone. So yeah, that's the microphone. Again, you know, you could switch it out for what you need. All right, the next thing in this vlog setup is a ND filter. And the ND filter that we picked out for this setup is the KNF Concept Variable ND filter. I think it was like $30. And this is a really solid investment if you want to have a much, much better looking image. Because if you don't know what an ND filter is, is basically uh, you want to keep your shutter speed double your frame rate. So if I was shooting at 24 frames per second, you'd put it at 1 50th of a second. But when you're in bright light, you would normally just make that shutter speed like 1 200th of a second or even more and then it starts to look super choppy and jittery and the motion blur doesn't look natural so that's why you normally want to keep it at 1 50th of a second or instead of changing your shutter speed you could change your aperture but the thing is since we're using a f 3.5 kit lens it already doesn't get that blurry of a background so to stop down the aperture you get even less of a blurry background and we're trying to get as much as we can out of this little kit lens so to get more depth of field is kind of better when it comes to how it looks maybe you don't care about that then you can just change your aperture but if you're like me then you want to be able to have a blurrier background as well as a smooth motion blur so that's where the nd filter comes into play okay so another thing that i need to talk about is kind of an essential and that's sd cards you could really go with any sd card but I do recommend going for SanDisk. It's just the most reliable when it comes to SD cards. Obviously, you could go Lexar or whatever the other companies are. I really haven't tried them, but I have heard that they tend to be not quite as reliable. So I would generally go for SanDisk. You don't need Extreme Pros. Those ones are like 170 megabytes or something a second. So they're really fast, so you could record 4K. Anything on the Canon M50 in the megabytes per second or megabits per second, everything's pretty much under 100. I think even the 4K is, and if this doesn't make any sense, basically just get like a SanDisk SD card for like 12 bucks. You get a 64 gig or a 128 for like 25, and that will work perfectly fine. And that's basically all you need to record vlogs. All right, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you liked that little vlog setup and you want to see more videos on the Canon M50, make sure to leave a like on today's video and comment down below what camera you are using to vlog. Anyways, guys, that's it for today's video. I'll see you in the next one.